The Jirikazuki Nature Museum at Benedictine University in Lyle, Illinois is a small natural history museum founded in 1971, although much of the collection dates back to the mid to late 1800s. The museum now cares for over 10,000 specimens, beginning as a teaching collection for the Natural Sciences Division of St. Procopius College in the 1920s, the museum has grown to be an award-winning institution focused on life science education. There are over 3,500 specimens on display at the museum. Many of the museum specimens have been preserved as taxidermy specimens. A professional called a taxidermist processes and preserves the specimen after the animal has died. A cast of the animal is created and the skin, or pelt, is stretched over the form. The muscle definition and other details are important to create a realistic specimen. The eyes and soft tissues are recreated with resin or glass. They are placed in natural poses similar to how they would have been when they were alive. Our job here at the museum is to display these specimens in different ways so that we can learn from and honor these past lives. Many of the specimens are over 100 years old, but you can still learn so much from them. We create various dioramas and displays to compare and contrast anatomy or learn about habitats that are far away. Each specimen is truly unique and has its own story to tell. Here we have our seed dispersal display. Tree squirrels and ground squirrels are important seed dispersers. Burrs can become tangled in their fur and can be transported far away from the parent plant before a squirrel preens itself and drops the seed. Squirrels and rodents are also very well known for gathering and burying seeds, especially in the autumn. Although squirrels can remember or smell the accurate location of 95% of those seeds and nuts, they bury over 25 per hour, so there are many that are left over and will sprout in the spring. You may have noticed this unusual squirrel in the corner here. These three squirrels are all eastern gray squirrels. The white squirrel is albino. That means it has a genetic mutation that affects its pigment cells. It does not produce any pigment or color, so the fur is actually clear and appears white. The squirrel behind that appears very dark in color. This squirrel is melanistic. This means that it has a similar genetic mutation, but instead it overproduces pigment, so the fur appears very dark brown. Keep an eye out, as both of these genetic variations are rare, but they can be spotted in our area from time to time. These displays highlight the many backyard birds across North America. These passerine or perching birds migrate annually, some traveling as far as 6,000 miles from Alaska to South America. Birds are warm-blooded and migrate in response to food source availability rather than temperature. But for some birds, especially those that rely on insects and nectar, they must migrate to warmer areas where food is plentiful. Birds that eat seeds and berries can stay around our area all winter as long as food is available. They will be back in the spring to nest again. A bird's nest is basically like a crib or nursery. They don't actually live in it. They just use it to hold their eggs while they have eggs and nestlings. Once the young birds are ready to fly, the nest is abandoned. Any season can be a great season to start birding. Find a good field guide, get outside, and see if you can identify some of our feathered friends. Water birds are different from passerine birds. These birds live near water sources and eat fish, amphibians, invertebrates, and plants. Many have webbed feet that help them swim and dive. Others have long legs to wade into shallow water to catch fish. There are many different types of water birds, all suited to live in their preferred habitat of lakes, ponds, oceans, shorelines, or wetlands. Echinoderms are a major group of marine invertebrate animals, including sea stars, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, sand dollars, and more. They usually live in the intertidal zone, but they can be found along the seafloor at any ocean depth. Sea stars have thick, calcified skin that protects from predators, tiny suction-cupped feet to walk and hold prey, and a distinctive body shape. There are over 2,000 species of sea stars worldwide. Echinoderms have radial symmetry, and many species have five arms or multiples of five arms. Echinoderms do not have brains, but they do have a nervous system that runs throughout each arm and the body. Tiny eye spots at the end of each arm allows them to detect light and dark, but they cannot see like we do. 
Their tiny tubed feet are highly sensitive to chemicals, allowing them to find their prey. Simple gills in their tube feet serve as a respiratory system to take in oxygen and pass carbon dioxide. Sea stars have a simple digestive system. They actually can push their stomachs outside of their body to digest their food externally. This allows sea stars to eat prey that is much larger than it would otherwise be able to. Mollusks are a large group of invertebrate animals that have soft bodies and are found in marine, freshwater, and land habitats. Mollusks include snails, clams, oysters, cephalopods, and more. There are over 200,000 species worldwide. Most mollusks grow hard, protective shells, many of which are seen here. After the mollusk dies, many other species, such as crabs, use the protective shell as a temporary home. However, only the mollusk can actually grow the shell. Those other species have to move to larger and larger shells as they grow. Insects are distinguished by their segmented body, which has a head, thorax, and abdomen. They have two antennae, six legs, and are invertebrates with protective exoskeletons. Many also have wings. Beetles, flies, hornets, aphids, moths, and butterflies are all insects, to name a few. There are about 91,000 species of insects known to science in the U.S. Each species has a unique role within its ecosystem. Many insects are pollinators, including flies, moths, butterflies, and some beetles, and they help to carry pollen between flowers as they visit for sips of nectar. Many flies, ants, and beetles are important decomposers, eating dead plants or carrion to recycle nutrients back into the soil. Insects also aerate the soil and help control plant pests. They are also vital to the food web, and many other animals rely on insects, especially caterpillars, to feed their young. Turtles are reptiles with a special bony shell that encases their body. The top of the shell is called the carapace. The bottom is called the plastron. The shell is actually a modified rib cage and is a rigid skeletal box that protects the turtle. The spine is attached to the shell and although turtles can tuck their heads and limbs into the shell, they cannot exit their shell as it is part of their skeleton. There are about 350 species of turtles worldwide on every continent except Antarctica. Tortoises are species of turtle that live exclusively on land. Please remember to never pick up a turtle by its tail. The tail is part of the spine. If you have to pick up a turtle, make sure you grab it firmly on both sides at the back of the shell. But be careful, because they may bite. Thank you for touring some of the Jirikasuki Nature Museum collections. Connect with us online for more life science education resources at ben.edu slash museum. As always, we encourage everyone to look up, down, and all around as you explore the amazing details of the world around you.